of jobs that I've never even tried here. I mean, well, there's life to hope, eh? <laughs> I mean, we might be down, but we're not out. Hurry up, Molly. It's after eight o'clock. Well, I'm sure you'll find something back in Dublin. Ah, oh, the jobs back home. I tell you, they get you nowhere. Whatever you start out as, you probably end up as. There's no extra riches over there, you know. There wasn't any here, was there? God knows we tried. Now look, Ginger, you promised. All You're right, taking all the boat right. home. I still say a man with any ambition to be something just doesn't have a job that suits him, you know. Da -dee, la 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 la. Do you want an egg with your breakfast? Yes, right. There must be a law of averages, kitten. Why not do for a change? Ginger, we can't afford to stay. Oh, come on now. Straight after breakfast, you'll go downtown and collect those boat tickets. Just as you promised. All right, my lovely old girl. Thomas? Why, Thomas? this afternoon and all the kids are going. Does your mommy know? She said it was too much money. So it is. Oh. Let's see what we got here then. Two dollars. All right. Here you are. Thanks, Daddy. Hey. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> There's some talk of an opening down at our place. Oh, what's that then? Desk man. Desk man? It's uh, editorial, like a sub-editor. Editor? Yes. Oh, editor. Well, that sounds interesting. Wait a minute, wait. Nothing definite. But if anything happens, I'll give you a buzz. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, give my love to Vera. Yes, I will. Uh, drop in at us any time. So long, Joe. I know you go now. Morning, Mr. LaBelle. How are you? Good morning, Mrs. Finesse. Good morning. Nice to see you, then. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Yeah. Step over here, please. Your name, Step over here. Morning. Miss Dean. Miss 
trial here. Yes, well, I've been run off my feet these last months. A lot of interviews. Mr. Moskowitz. The three jobs we have got you, you've walked off all three. Makes those computer Oh, uh, well, uh, that was, uh, when, when I first came over, that was just a bit of a stopgap. Then office supplies, three weeks. Yes, uh, that was a sort of disaster of place. <laughs> and Emerson paper box? Oh, uh, well, that was the best of the lot of them, but the trouble there was that there was no real chance of advancement. I mean, a man of my type, you've got to have the right class of a job. Yes. I see here you've been applying for public relations positions. Yes. You don't seem to have any experience in that sort of thing. In the army. Yes, the Irish army. But look, you didn't finish university. You can't get a public relations job nowadays without a degree. Well, I'll be straight with you, Mr. Uh... O'Donnell. Mr. O'Donnell, you see, I'm going to give this country another chance. Now, I'm going to bet on Canada. I'm a bit of a gambler, you know. Well, that being the case, uh, I would be prepared to accept a more junior position than I'd have at home. Uh, so, so you make me an offer. Well, if there's nothing in public relations, how about sales? Well, I can check. Step over here, please. Yes, right over here. Thank you. Mr. Carby, there's an opening in Canada Nickel for assistant to the sales manager, but they like a man with some experience in Ah, uh, assistant, I suppose uh, most of those assistants are just glorified office boys running errands and so on. No, you see, with the man of my age, there's no future to that. Well, I'd leave this with perhaps some uh, would sales training. Would there be a chance of promotion, program. though, do you think? There's always a chance of promotion. Yes, well, in that case, I mean, there's nothing to nickel. You couldn't study up half an hour in the encyclopedia, no? No, if I could become manager, uh, would you get on the phone and make an appointment? Spare me 50 bucks for a week or two. Oh. Spot you 20. Oh, oh no. good man yourself. I'll pay you back in a day or two. I've got this job. I'm going to change my whole plan of attack. How's that? I'll let to lower the old sights a little. Uh, I told you, you got to start small over here. Well, they all say that right enough. Mr. Melton? Yeah. Look, uh, Ginger up here. Just looking for something that tied you over, I might be able to help out here. No, no. Frankly, this, uh, this diaper racket, it's not in my line, you know. It wasn't in my line either when I started out here, but I'm doing all right. Yes, of course, it's just uh, Just that you're too stuck up to get into a uniform and get a little dirt between your fingers. No, no, it's not that. To tell you the truth, I've got something very interesting coming up. Very interesting indeed. Mm. Oh, well, so long, Stan. Thanks a million. I'll pay you back in a week, I promise. So long now. OK. Good luck. <laughs> Yes, I 
That's here. And that's all in here. All right, all right. Mr. Coffee. How do you do, sir? You're uh, 39, Mr. Coffee, is that correct? Yes. Well, we specifically asked for a junior, somebody we could train, bring along, promote if he works out. Yes, well, in my case, you know, most of my experience has been on the other side of the water, so maybe I'll start lower down on the ladder, learn the ropes. Yes. Well, you see, we have a pension plan here, and the older the man is when he joins the firm, the more expensive it is on those who are already in the plan. You know how these things work. Yes. Suppose you leave me out of the pension plan. No, that's not possible. We need a junior. I'm sorry. Good 
Say on the ticket what time the boat train leaves Southampton. I didn't notice. Well, would you take a look? Yes. I'd like to write the time in my letter to Mother. Uh, you know where I was today? I was in the office of the Employment Commission. What about the ticket? <sighs> There's no good going on about the bloody tickets because I didn't get them. You didn't get them? No. Terribly expensive country, this, you know. You've spent the money. You've spent the passage money. Oh, God. You must have been lying to me for weeks. Letting me pack, writing those letters. Ginger, you promised you wouldn't touch a penny of that money. Kitten, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. You're sorry? What are we going to do? Well, I'll get a job. You'll get a job? Oh, Ginger, face facts. I am facing the facts. Oh, no, you aren't. When have you ever laughed at any job? What have you ever done in any job but dream about what you'd do with the next oh, one? Oh, come on now. That's not fair at all. Oh, no? Wasn't Canada your last fancy? The one country we'd all make our fortune? Oh, I'm as much to blame for encouraging you. What are we going to do about Polly? Oh, she'll be all right. Never mind about Polly. She'll Paulie. be all right. Oh, don't touch me. Oh, why did you have to touch that money? Oh, stop making such a bloody drama out of it. It's not the end of the world, for God's sake. I'll get another job. I just had a lot of bad luck, that's all. Nobody can help that. I just had a lot oh, of bad luck. Oh, don't you talk anymore. After all the things that we've done and the things that we've planned. What about all that packing I did today? I even sent off that big trunk with all our summer clothes. Oh, I'm sick of your lies and schemes. I don't care what you do from now on. Hello? I'm sick of your Hello? Please be quiet here, will you? Hello. Oh, my goodness, Dad, keep quiet. You sound like a bloody fishwife. Hello. Oh. Oh, yes, Joe. Yes. Well, I'd be, that'd be very interesting, yes. Uh, well, my grammar and punctuation, that's not... Uh, I, I was at the uh, university in Dublin there for a bit, you know. Yes. Well, when can I go down and see? Oh, I could. Hang on a minute, dear. Uh, well, yes, I I'll come down there right away. I'll, I'll get dressed and I'll be right down there, Joe. Thank you very much. Dear, you want to stay in Canada, don't you? Well, sure, Daddy. What's up? What's up? I tell you what's up. I think my luck's changed. I think that's what's up. The Montreal Tribune. They want an editor down there. Some editor or something. Since when have you known anything about editing a newspaper? Oh, he said I didn't matter about experience. He said I wasn't to worry about that. Oh, well, I'd worry if I were you. Oh, it's not you that's worried. There's a old oh, Joe McVeigh. He's giving me a bit of encouragement. What are you doing? He's trying to drag me right down. Anyway, I said my luck was jet. I'm going down there right away. Why do you have to bring Tony into it? You always bring that child in whenever you have half a chance. Yeah, please stop carrying on, will you? Ginger, I want to come with you. No need for you to come. Oh, yes, there is. All right, dear. All right. Dear, I'm sorry. The fourth estate, you know. That may be the very sort of job that I've been waiting for. Come on now, darling. Now hurry it up. Let's get down there. Uh, excuse 
Excuse me, uh, could you tell me where I find Joe McLean? Back there in the sports section. <clears throat> Hello, Joey. Ah, Ginger. How's the boy? Very well. We'll see you in a second. All right. Here's the bit. I'll give you a good build-up, then you take it from there. But what am I going to say, Joe? Like five minutes, OK? Here. Well, tell them about that, uh, the PR work with the Irish Whiskey Company. Oh, yes, I'll do that. Yeah. No, no, better still. You worked for a Dublin newspaper. I, I never worked for any Dublin newspaper. <laughs> Oh, do you want the job or don't you? I want it very much, but I can't just go in there. Now, wait a minute. Do as I say. Got to lay it on thick. The employers never check. The main thing is to get the job, and the rest is easy. Right. Dublin to the University of Tekken Arts degree. When I was in the army, sir, after that, it was public relations. Public relations? You know what that is? That's pulling the wool over the public's eyes. That's very good, sir. I must bear that one in mind. What else would you do? A bit of journalism. What paper? Yes. Uh, Irish Times. Good paper? Yes. How long were you there? About five years. I knew it. Told you to be coming in. That's right, Mr. Mack. Why did you come to Canada? Oh, I came out here as a public relations man representing an Irish firm. What sort of firm? Whiskey. Scotch whiskey? No Irish, sir. No wonder you're out of a job, then. Did you work on the farm desk at the Times? Oh, the farm desk, yes. I, I was there, sir, yes. Look at that. Where's the good money paying these loafers? Get me ten Milani. When did you say you worked there? About uh, two years ago, there. Ted, when you worked in the Irish Times, did you ever hear of a subreddit name of... Uh, what's your name? Copy, sir. Copy? Oh, two years ago. Wait, wait a minute. What was the name of the foreign editor from your day? I'm afraid I... I can't remember, sir. Okay, Ted. Doesn't no matter. If you'd been a Scotch, you'd have come in here with your references in your hands. But you carry nothing but that silly hat and a lot of cheek. Let me tell you, laddie. There isn't an Irishman born could pull the wool over my eyes. I have to apologize for taking up your time. Are you hand up for a job? Tell the truth now. Spell me parallel. P A R A double L E L. Come into the office. can tell. Hitler sends you? Who? Hitler, the boss. Oh, yes. Here's the Bible. Make sure you learn it. Oh, thank you very much. For what? This job, you'll find the night shift down at the Eagle Tavern. Right. 
Hey, look for Foxy as a crutch. Oh, do that. Good luck, fella. I'm starting in half an hour, so don't wait up for me. You got the job. Isn't it grand? Now, of course, I want to see a man, you see, so just don't you wait up. Uh, I leave something off cold for you. Ginger, how much are you getting a week? 110. Is that true now? Cross my heart. Here's your first test from an editor. Hello, Vera. Hi, Joe. How's my girl tonight? Oh, I'm fine, fine. You are fine. Hey, you took a job as a proofreader. Yes, well, uh, it's only temporary, as you know. I was going to speak to you about oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see you later. Okay. Proofreader. Well, now, dear, I, I, I'll go and say that fellow I spoke to you about. Yeah. Ginger! What job are you getting? Well, there's a, there's a sort of a training scheme, you know, the usual thing. You start as proofreader, but you work your way up. Proofreader? I thought you said you were going to be an editor. No, I didn't. I didn't say that exactly. I didn't have a chance to tell you exactly what it was. How much money are you getting? Uh, 75 for a start. 75? Is that the truth? Word of honor. Well, I suppose we'll have to. Of course we can, darling. Oh, God, Ginger! And I believe you. Must I go upstairs and check? Oh, come away. Don't do it personally in front of all these people. All right. Forty-five dollars a week. Forty-five dollars a week? We can't live on forty-five dollars a week in this country. Well, it's just for a start. They're going to promote me. They'll make me into a reporter. But you just once in your life, please tell me the truth. Look, it's not my fault we're in this mess, you know. It's not the fault of your pal, Joey. Blame him. Yes, just blame anybody. You're never at fault, are you? And who spent the passage money? Keep your voice down, Vera. Here, here, darling, I promise you. It's going to work out. How much money do we have? Oh, we've got about $40. Give me 20. Right now. Right now. All right, love. All right. There you are. With half my worldly wealth in the endow. Oh, 
That's what they say, it isn't America, it's not even Russia. The 20th century belongs to Canada. That's very interesting. I've heard it 50 times. Oh, ah, drink up. Oh, well, yes, cheers. Come on, drink up. Come on, drink up. Come on, drink up. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. To hell with this. Carry on. What's the matter? Well, I mean, what are we doing here in Gusley Knack a lot of pigs? I mean, what's the rush? Ah, good question, you man. In answer, there are those is not a compliment. I think his problem is women. Now, why would I have to have a problem? Every proofreader has a problem, else why would he be a proofreader? You know what this lad's problem is, don't you, Ed? Lousy gimp. Identification with money, it's classic. Money, that was my problem. Gambled it all away. Money's everybody's problem, right, fella? Shut up, let me explain the facts of life to our immigrant brother. Tonight you'll be a proofreader. Right? Oh, no, no, that's only temporary. Mr. McGregor, he said that I, I should be made a reporter. Greg, <laughs> it's only readers. That's what he needs. We're always short of proofreading. That's why I promised you to be a reporter. Just to suck you in. Oh, it's only temporary. Sure, sure. It's a wild dick and an Eskimo tonight if one walks in up the street. Tonight you will become a proofreader. You will cast a cold eye on all the news. Those are just finger exercises. We don't care about mistakes, you know, right, do we? <laughs> Advertisement? Exactly. Advertisements cost money. They pay. Come free. Oh, yes, I see that. No, you don't see. The monthly old social pay. <laughs> Get the names right there, too. They belong to important families. They belong to the people who buy the advertisements. Come free. Yes, I do see that. No, you don't see. Come on, Gary's place. Let's go. Remember this, Jack. You're just a damn galley slave from now on. Five dollars <laughs> sixty. Hey, uh, no need to leave a big tip. Oh yes.
Where she is. He said I wasn't to tell you. Where are you staying? What's Mummy doing now? She went to look for a job. What job? I don't know. Look, Daddy, when I see her this afternoon, I'll tell her you want to talk to her, okay? Will you be at home? No. I'll have to move. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's only right? temporary. I'll be at I'll be at the YMCA. That's where I'll be. Now you tell her to call me. Now don't forget that. No, Daddy, I promise, Daddy, I have to go. Hello, Matt. It's me. It's Ginger. Yes, dear. Yes. Uh, uh, Matt, uh, did you by any chance hear or, or, or see Vera today? No. Oh, no, no. There's nothing wrong with her. No, no. I, I, I just wondered, you know. Excuse me, uh, excuse me, my name is Coffee, uh, I'm in, uh, 327, yes, that's right. I'm expecting a phone call, would you let me know? Right off. You know how these things are. Females always complaining. Get best stop being a bachelor. Still, you know what women are like. Yeah, there's any man. Joy, if you do happen to hear from her, will you let me know, please? Yeah. Ginger? You know, I have to be a friend of Vera's, too. What's that supposed to mean exactly? It means if she doesn't want to see you, that's her business. Who said she doesn't want to see me? Does she? Thank you. 
about you. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. I told her, Daddy, but she said she didn't want to see you. Oh, now listen. You go back now. You shouldn't have told me. He's here. Look, Daddy, this isn't my fault. I've got a good job now. I'm going to be an editor. All our troubles are over. Now, you love your daddy, don't you? Oh, daddy, don't be so sloppy. Where are you staying? Mommy said no, she can't. Oh, please, pet. You must tell me. Come on, tell your daddy, pet. We're at Joe's. Joe McGrath! You get your mother out of there this minute. I told you, she's not here. You tell her you're not staying the night there, do you hear? Ginger? Hitler. Hey, no, that's the court. Back to work, you black of my sack of loafers. Gone to hockey game. When will he be back? Oh, he won't be back tonight. Then he's uh, phone his story in. I've been waiting an old day. It's all right, darling. I'm sorry. It's only me. Now, go back to sleep. It's Joe McLeod you're looking for. He's not here. He's staying with friends. He offered to lend us his place, so I get a job. Where's the expenses to go on $20? A hotel? What do you mean, go? I'm getting a job, and I'm going to save up enough money to get Paulie and me back to Ireland. You can do whatever you like from now on. There's no need to be getting a job. If you'd let me take a job the first week we came out here, we wouldn't be in this mess now. We're not in any mess. Aren't we? Ginger. I want a divorce. A divorce? Are you serious? You want a divorce? What's your holy mother going to say about the sin of a divorce? Don't you preach religion at me. You that hasn't walked through a church door since the day we came out here. You never were a Catholic. You were too selfish to give God or anyone else the time of day. Oh, you may think I'm like you now. And I am. But you changed me, Ginger. What I am now is what you made me. So don't you talk sin to me. Don't you dare. I never knew how much I loved you until today. I never knew how much I, I'm, I'd miss you. Oh, you'd miss a servant if she looked after you for 15 years. That's not love. Oh, come on now. I'll bet you a slap-up dinner and a brand new frock. Oh, a brand new frock. 
I could stock a dress shop if I collected on half your bed. Oh, God, Ginger, you'll never change. Just go away, will you? Please. Go away. Or you go back to bed. No. Did you hear me, miss? I'm not a child. You dragged me out of our house last night. Oh, please, go back to bed. This is none of your business. It is my business. If you're going to leave Daddy, that doesn't mean I have to leave him. Daddy's in charge of me, too. Yes. That's right, I am in charge of you, too. Yes, you're right. Supposing I get a little flat just for the two of us. And what? A proofreader's salary? Yes, that's you all over, isn't it? You're dragging me down. I can get two jobs, you know. I can have one in the daytime. How about it, Uncle? Is it a deal? All right, Daddy. Good girl. Now, love, you go to bed. I'll pick you up the day after tomorrow. Yes. Well... You're not as smart as you think you are. You. You bloody rotter. Using your own daughter. Oh, never mind about that. Look, look, Vera. You change your mind. Before I come to pick her up, there'll be no recriminations. We'll forget all this ever happened. Oh, will you? You think I can't get down in a muck and scramble for a living? You say I'll never get to be an editor. Well, I'll show you. Who are you, anyway, judging me, talking about love? Love isn't sleeping with the likes of Joe McGlade, Mrs. Coffey. Ah, yes. 
Well, uh, I've got no cash on that at the moment, you see, so I'd better, uh, I'd better get down there this afternoon and get an advance. But don't forget now, huh? No, no, uh, never fear, madame. Never fear. Merci. Ginger, how's the boy? Now you're in the moving business now. I thought your speciality was letting out room. Okay. I've got a lot of sidelines. Samaritan's my middle name. The big one's yours, Barry, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Where are you going? Oh, Joe's helping me move over to my new place. As if it was any of your business. Here are those gloves, Polly. Very grand today, aren't we? Might I ask where you got your new coat? You might not. Stop teasing the poor guy. She's got a job selling dresses. Come on, Polly. We'll go upstairs and I'll help you get settled in. Will you stop treating me like an infant? Well, now, don't forget to call me at the store. I won't be getting my own telephone in for a couple of days. Mommy, your friend is waiting. How about a kiss, then? I'll be bringing over her laundry next week. For God's sake, look after her, Ginger. Bye, Ginger. Bye, Polly. Thank you, Ginger. See you tomorrow. What are you? Oh, I wanted to see you, Mr. Brock. What for? Wanted to ask for an advance. Look at this. Off nine percent. Fifteen percent on this route. He wants an advance. I'll tell you what's going to happen here. All you people are going to be out of a job, that's what. What's wrong? Well, uh... What do you mean? Washing machines. We know about those. Disposable diapers, that's something else. But customers want them, eh? No, sir. No, they don't, as a matter of fact. Oh, yes, they do. They always want something new. Customers are asking for them, right? No, no, sir. All right, let's go. What do they ask? Well, they ask for what you haven't got. <laughs> White paper diapers, right. Oh, no, sir, they ask for uh, cribs and bassinets and things like that. You know, especially people with only one kid, you know, they prefer to rent that, you know, sir. Come in here. Shut the door. Sit down. What's your name? Jay Officer. Huh? Go on. 
Well, sir, I was wondering if you could see a way to let me have an advance of 25 No, no, no. What you were saying about Chris? Oh, yes, well, I just said if you could uh, rent things to people. Rent a crib, for instance. You think that's the name you said? What then? Rent a crib. Uh, you don't look like a driver. Oh, well, no, sir, no, that's only temporary. Uh, uh, it's not the sort of thing I'm used to. I'm a new Canadian, you know. I, I, I've got two jobs. I've got a night job. I work on the Tribune. Two jobs? That's how it works. You like this country coffee? Oh, yes, sir. I like it very much. It's a very go-ahead sort of place. Now, this idea of yours, rent a crib, you did figure the cleaning tie in. Cleaning? Pads and blankets and so on. Oh, yes. Uh, well, that would be essential, wouldn't it, sir? It's service that counts, right? Right, sir. Twenty-five dollars. Oh, thank you. Do you want me to sign for this, sir? No, no, it's a bonus. If you have any more ideas like this one, come in. We'll talk them over. Well, that's very nice of you indeed, sir. Well, thank you very much for the bonus, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Sir, you may remember that you said I'd uh, learn the uh, Tribune style from proofreading. Well, sir, I think I've got that now. Good, nice to know someone's working in this loafer's paradise. Sir, is there any chance of that reporter's job you spoke of? Tell him how many men want to become reporters, Clarence. Doesn't. So we're not short of reporters at the moment, Coffee. You'll have to hang on a while. Oh, well, sir, uh, I can't hang on a while, you see, sir, because I'm a family man. What do you get? Forty-five? All right, all right. I'll give you fifty. Make an order. Thank you very much, sir. But, sir, I'd far rather have the promotion. Did you ever hear such cheek? But, sir, but what? Sir, I want to know definitely when I can become a reporter. Well, how do I know? When I get a replacement for you on the proof desk, maybe next week. Next week, sir. Is that a promise? What do you mean a promise? Well, sir, if it's not a promise, I think it'd be best for me to resign right here and now, this very minute. Hold your horses, hold your horses. I'm short staffed on the proof desk. All right. All right! Oh, thank you very much, sir. Sir, you won't regret this, I assure you. Now, is that a promise? Because if it is not a promise, I'm going to resign. Right here and now, this very minute. Well, you should see the look on his face. Ah. What do you think he said? <laughs> Next week, he said. All right. All right. Ah. Is that a promise, isn't it? Yes, he said it's a promise. Now, what about that, then? <laughs> Clarence, taking them. Yes. What are you two guys plotting? Hi, Joe. How's the sporting life? Oh, fair to middle. Fair to middle. Ginger, he's going to be a reporter. Hitler promised him. <laughs> you believe that? Who we'll asked you for your opinion? Now, is that any way to treat your best buddy? I'm not your best buddy. Oh, come on, come off it. What's the matter with you? Can't you get a woman of your own? What do you mean by that? You know bloody well what I mean by that. If anyone just passes the time of day with his wife, he's glaring at you like a lunatic. You leave my wife out of it. Come on, Kenny. You know, you're the sort to take advantage of anybody. Now, come on, fellas. Take it easy. I'm taking it easy. I'm taking it easy. Tim. Excuse me.
want something to eat? Who are those boys? Friends. Friends. A lot of ill-mannered little louts, if you ask me. Well, nobody asked you. Don't you be rude, my girl. Don't you be rude. What's all this Don't lipstick you all over your face? Take it off this very moment. No. Don't you say no to me. I'll get out of the Don't you dare. Put that right down. see you about Polly. Is she sick? No, no, she's not so sick. She's... Wait a minute. Last night, you know, three o'clock in the morning. A bunch of young hoodlums, they come bursting out of the house. I go in. Polly's in there, she's painted up like an old woman. What are we going to do, dear? Polly might come and live with me. Yes, but she doesn't. She doesn't want to come and live with you. See what I was hoping. Oh, I know what you were hoping. That I'd come back. Oh, it's just lovely for you, isn't it? Polly doesn't want to live with me. I don't want to live with you. They're going to make me a reporter on Friday. I get a lot more money, you know. I'll be able to give up this dire for thing. I have more time to look after Polly. Could we not be all together until then? Just for a few days. Would you not come back just till Friday? Yes, well, so you, you've, you've come after all. Huh. Huh. 
I'm worn out, you know. Terrible drag, you know, in that proof room. It's a great relief, you know, the quiet in here. Well. Glad to have you back, dear. Ginger? Yes? You sleep there. What? Or I'll get up and leave. Oh, suffering, Jay. Oh. Vera, I do love you, you know. You don't know what love is? Oh, yes, 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 I do. Go back to your own bed, Ginger. Do you ever think of anyone but yourself? <sighs> Vera? Vera, I made up my mind. If I don't get promoted on Friday, well, I'll, I'll, I'll bow out. It's a half folly. You can have your divorce, too. Wasn't well, that unselfish of me, Vera? I mean it. Are you awake? Suit you. 
Well, that's very decent of you, sir. No, no, it's only fair. After all, you gave us the idea. Come here. This is your office. Glad to have you with us. We'll have to get your typist because you have a lot of organizing to do. And I want you to work full time on rent a crib. Oh, and think of ideas for promotion. Now, let's get going on this artwork. I think we should stick to two colors. I think five by three is uh, just about the right. Excuse color. me, sir. Uh, sir, the trouble is that I have another job. Oh, you mean the proofreading? No, no, I want you to quit that. If it's the money, remember, a hundred a week is just a start. No, sir, no, it's not the money. No, sir, it's a, it's a good job. It's a, it's a job I'm promised. What job? Sir, it's a reporter on the Tribune. Now, that's worth having, you'll admit. Reporter? I don't know a reporter in this province you couldn't buy for 20 bucks in a plain envelope. Come on, coffee. No, sir, no. No, it's promised. You know... You'd be making a terrible mistake, Coffee. You see, Mr. Broder, I, I do have to have something with a bit of a future to it. But there's a future here. Ah, yes, sir, but... It's not exactly the kind of future that I have in mind. It's your life. Well, let's run this one for a month. And as the weekly, I think a week or two. Sir, uh... Sir, I don't think that uh, you understood. You see, I'd be starting as reporter, but I'd have a very good chance of winding up as an editor. So, you're quitting us. Yes, sir. Sir, I was going to tell you in a day or two. Okay. Take Mr. Coffee off salary at the end of the week. Mr. Brock, thank you very much indeed for the offer. Good luck. I hope you know what you're doing. your mother home? She said she wouldn't be home for dinner. Didn't you make anything to eat? I didn't have time. Oh, Jane. Now, fry me up a couple of eggs, will you? I have homework. You know there's nobody do anything for me in this house. Day and night. Those two jobs, that was enough to kill a horse. Is it true you and Mummy are separating? Mummy tell you that? She said we're moving out tonight. You're not moving anywhere, my girl, because I'm going to get promoted tonight, and that's our arrangement. She said you're not going to get any promotion. And after we come back from up north, we're moving into a new place. What's that? Up north? Well, Joe McClay's going up to report in his ski meet. And he's given me a lift. But her mummy's going too. Mm-hmm. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. She thinks I'm bluffing. I'm not bluffing at all, I can tell you that. You'll change your mind when I get that promotion. You'll change your mind about a lot of things. I know your mother. Oh, God. Hello, Mr. Back to the phone line. Can you tell me where I'll find Mr. Fox? Who? Fox, proofreader. Uh, you better look at... You want Mr. Fox? Yes. Hey, a proofreader. That's right. Name's Ellis. Yeah, they're a new man. That's right. Hello, McGregor, he hired you, did he? Uh -huh. Right on the button. Well, oh, Fox, he's in there. He, he's a big fella in there with a beard and a crutch. He's right there at that middle fence. <laughs> Hello, Fanny. Hi, Fanny. Is McGregor in there? Sure is. Oh, that's 
I want the player on that bomb plot. With Canadian press color as a sidebar. Then. Right, and we'll take a number two head in the shoe week convention. How about three two column cuts and a button up at the top of the page? Okay, McGill University Chancellor is a one column cut on three. Well then, Mr. Mack. What do you want? Quite all right, sir. Just wait half a minute. I have a minute. What is it? Oh, well, sir. It's Friday. Friday? What are you talking about? You'll be remembering your promise, sir. Here, give me that. Yeah? Who? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Go on, get back to work. Well, sir, look here, sir. You promised you'd make me a reporter. Can Still short on the proof desk, Mr. Oh, Mr. Mr. Clarence, uh, look here. Now, you're, you're very busy. You've, you've probably forgotten, sir. You've just hired a new man down there. I know. The union's filed a complaint. We've been short-staffed at that desk. Come on, we've got a paper to get out here. But, but, but Mr. McGregor, sir, look, look sir, uh, this is very important to me. I, I've given up another job for this. More fool you. Now, look here, sir. You promised to make me a reporter. Clarence. I don't recall any promise, Mr. Mack. Come on, let's go, boys. Let's go. Come on. Oh, take your hand off me. Oh, no, don't push me. I'll push you if I want to. All right, all right.
Do you suppose you it's Phil? Uh, oh, well, uh, officer, I, I was just coming along this street and I was, uh, uh, well, uh, it's very cold. I felt the, uh, I felt the call of nature, uh, you see. So I, uh, I just uh, come into this corner. And, I mean, there's nobody about. If there'd been anybody about. Think they come in offense. What offense? Where you might there be a sewer boss, sir. It say I was drunk. I'm, I'm, I'm not drunk. Oh, well, there are three bills, you. Oh, yeah, but... Uh, no, I'm not a liar. No, no, listen, uh, officer, um, could, could we not, uh, could we not some way settle this man? I mean, do, we don't have to go through all this, do we? Oh, but you must stay a boss, huh? No, I don't, no, you don't understand. No, you, you don't understand me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to bribe you and all that stuff. Not, not My partner to... over there, he heard you. Hey, come on. In. Come on. Three dollars and sixty-two cents. It'll be arranged in court tomorrow morning. There's a phone inside you could use. Go in the cells now. de 50 dollars, la propriété de M. Pierre Proulx, le tout contrairement à l'article 280 du Code criminel. Êtes-vous coupable ou non coupable Coupable, votre honneur. Avez-vous un dossier antérieur Oui, votre honneur. J'ai été condamné à six mois de prison pour un vol. Condamné à un an d'emprisonnement. Cours suivant. James Francis Coffey. James Francis Coffey. On the 20th of February, in the city of Montréal, province of Québec, at premises on Dorchester Street, known as the Windsor Hotel, did willfully do an indecent act in a public place by exposing your person in a manner detrimental to the public wheel. You plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. Is the prisoner represented by counsel? Il n'en a pas demandé, Votre Honor. This case is being tried in English. Sorry, Your Honor. He did not ask for a lawyer. Proceed with the case. Mr. Coffey, please come forward. Call the first witness. Constable Maurice Lavalley, please take the stand. Jurez-vous de dire la vérité, toute la vérité, rien que la vérité. Je jure. Que Dieu vous vienne en aide. Votre nom, votre profession, votre âge. Maurice Lavalley, police officer, Montreal Police Department, 32 years old. Exactly where did the incident take place? At the side entrance of the hotel, Your Honor. Was there anyone else in the street at the time? Not as far as I could see, but there were people in the lobby. Did they see the accused? If they could have, but we took such speedy action, Your Constable, Honor. Constable, if there are to be any compliments to the police department this morning, would you please allow them to come from me? What time did the incident occur? At uh, 2.45 in the morning, he had been drinking and he tried to bribe me. But you didn't charge him with that, did you? No, Your Honor. Do you have anything, any question to ask to the witness? No, sir, no, 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 no questions, no. That'll be all, thank you. Mr. Coffey. Sir? Have you anything to say in your defense? Uh, uh, yes, sir. I, I, I think I do. Yes, sir. Take the stand. Swear in the accused. 
So you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, indeed. That's what I do, yes. So help you, God. State your name, occupation, address, and age. Name is Jeff Coffey, 1221 Plessy Street. The occupation at the moment, sir, and I'm 39 years old. You heard the testimony of the constable. Had you been drinking? Oh, yes, sir. I had a few drinks. Very cold there. I was a long time waiting for the bus stop. You're Irish by the sound of you. Yes. Then we'll take it that you had a few. <laughs> and uh, how long did you wait for the bus? Oh, I waited there a long time, sir. It's been at least 20 minutes. Well, that long? I can see you're not a native of Montreal. <laughs> did you know it was a hotel? No, sir. As a matter of fact, I thought it was an office building. I see. And in your country, is it common practice to relieve yourself in the office doorways? <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? Well, sir, I'm a... Uh, I'm a new Canadian. I find it difficult to get settled down. And Come to the point. Yes, sir, well... My wife and I, we had agreed that um, if I was got to go and get promoted, it'd be reported all right, but sir, I got sacked, and um, well, after, the truth of the matter is, sir, I couldn't look after my wife and my child. Do you have anything more to say that is pertinent to the charge? No, sir, I don't. Step down, please. All right. There has been no citizen's complaint. And as there seems to be no previous criminal record, I must say there's some question in my mind as to why the police prefer the more serious charge, indecent exposure. Constable, when you make a charge, you must have proved to substantiate your charge. How many times have I told the police department that very thing? So in this case, I'm inclined to give the accused the benefit of the doubt. As the charge is indecent exposure and no other, I have decided to dismiss it. Go suivant. Oui, le blanc. Oui, le blanc, vous êtes accusé d'avoir... I just want to say goodbye. Are you going up north? Yes, skiing. We're on our way to pick up Paulie. Would you have time for a cup of coffee? I'll tell Joe to go over to my place.
see them all laughing at me in the court. I was just a joke to them. My whole life was just a joke. Standing there in the dock, I kept wondering, what's it matter about good jobs? What's it matter what people think? You were right, you know. Sheriff, you're going to go up north. I'd best be taking you back to your place. What are you going to do now? Go back to Ireland? Oh, no. This is home now. You're right. We're staying here, too. A fellow could be worse off. You know, Ginger, I'm sure that man at the diaper place would give you that job as his assistant. If you wanted it. Oh, why, in a couple of months from now, He'll have forgotten all this ever happened. I'll bet you a, a slap up dinner and a night on the town that you'll have a good job and you'll be sitting pretty. You sound just like me, you know. <laughs> 